Let's get ready to do some unboxing from the storage unit. Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to be opening up two boxes of items from the recent storage unit that Taco Stacks bought and that I helped clean out. It would have been impossible for us to look in each and every box while at the storage unit. So he let me take a few boxes home and we are going to see what surprises await us inside. If you did not check out the storage unit video, be sure to do so. I will put that in the description below so you can go and watch that and see what fun was had at the $100 unit. So I have my kitchen gloves on. <laughs> my normal gloves are being washed um, and let's get to it. So I have two boxes here today. I do have a box that has some comics and other paper. That might have to be for another video. Um, because this might just take some time. This first box looks like it has some knickknack, patty wax, give your dog a bone. And the other box is one that I showed in my storage unit video. That looks like it has some toys, some cast iron items at the bottom. Who knows, but let's dig into this and see what treasures can be found. Now, I did already see this. So this is a deer painting on like a canvas type. It's actually cute, I think. Someone might want to put that in their hunting lodge. Then we have an array of porcelain ceramic items. Little tiger, lion, tiger, bears, oh my. Now a lot of these items are just simply a buck, two buck flea market items. You know, they're nothing that uh, it's going to bring in crazy money. You have planters, this nice little pottery piece. These gloves are a little weird to be wearing. I think we're going to take them off. This unit seemed really clean. There were not, there wasn't, there weren't any boxes of food, which usually almost every storage unit has boxes of food. So that was something different. This is special issue for CWI Brooklyn made in the Republic of Taiwan. Uh, it looks like it's a salt and pepper shaker. However, those holes are very large. So if you're going to be putting salt in there, <laughs> maybe it's for potpourri. That might be more like it. I have a, oh geez. It's a gnome sand figure. This reminds me of something that you would get down at the beach when you were on vacation in one of the boardwalk shops leaving some remnants behind. Oh, oh, she's broken. Darn it. We have a mermaid that has some damage to her tail. She's still cute. Uh, these should be waterer, waterers for your garden. We have snails, this broken fish. Oh, cute. These are vintage, 1981, Miller Studio. What in the world? Velcro together. So you have your classic fish that you would hang. Normally there, you would find them on bathroom walls and they can come in sets, you know, duos, trios. Sometimes they have little bubbles with them. Those are really cute. And some shot glasses. Florida Bell, a rock cat, and this planter, it just says 835 on the bottom. That'll go to the flea market too. There's some bells in there. That does it for this box. So now we're going to get to the big one. I wanted to get this one done first because the other one looks like it has a lot more treasures inside. Alrighty, so perhaps you'll be able to see some with me. Uh, oh, I did put some things in here that I uh, I took. <laughs> you had that I, that we found there. Hopefully, Taco Stacks will find the fourth one. The I will hold the bag. Little tea items. They're rather cute. Let's see if we can get this lid down. 
Um, and I did take the ceramic cat, a storage unit kitty cat. Now, this one has a light inside. These somewhat remind me of Plasticville, but they don't look quite as old as they should for Plasticville. There were train, uh, yes, Taco Stacks did find trains, so that would make sense. We have a little bag. Normally these would have some type of stones in them. That does not. Uh. I don't even if my gloves on. Oh well, we're just gonna go with it. Markers, paint markers. Is this a harmonica? No. Yeah, it is. Blues band harmonica. I'm not going to try and play that. <laughs> ring holder for your rings. Tickets. Oh, this makes sense. So I won't show this because it has the person's name in it, but uh, these are little stickers for the things that they would make with all the wood that we found in the storage unit. That makes sense now. I want to make myself a clock. Yeah, so this little container, it makes perfect sense because it has all artwork and items that they would have used on their projects. Empty. Empty, empty. Let's move this out of the way. So we do have this cast iron. Let's take this out first. More markers. What's this guy? That's cute. It's like a, a little bunny. You probably could put a candle on. A very folk artish. Now, uh, the trick is there are a lot of cast iron reproduction items. So you can mostly tell by the screws that were used whether or not it's real or repro. Uh, I'm, I'm going to wager <laughs> that this was reproduction but uh, this would should be an easy sell at the flea market so we have the other horses uh, these somewhat reminds me reminds me of the Clydesdale Budweiser and the driver and then you have all the little beer barrels. There's more. Oh, here's another driver. We have these great brackets. They're marked Spain. Flea market. Milk glass vase. Another thing about this unit is a lot of the stuff, most of it was not broken. There were only a few broken items, but you know, a lot of times in the storage units, you find things that are just in pieces. They were just thrown in. These, they, they took care of the items and packed them accordingly. Nature's Wonders in full color. I have some more pens. What's this guy? A bird, bird house, bird house planter. Oh, it's teleflora, so this would have held um, flowers. There's a Philadelphia mint bag with paperwork in there. This is more paperwork. That's another thing is we didn't really find a lot of paperwork. Normally you find lots of bills, receipts, 
credit cards. We didn't find that. We didn't find any wallets. Um, there's actually some old photos in here. Oh, cool. Another Harley hat. So this is made in USA. This is, you know, one you would wear when you were biking. That's really cool. But, you know, it, it was just a, a different type of unit for some reason. U.S. Mint, 1977. <clears throat> Just paperwork. Birthday card. Hoping you receive it soon. My mom told me you got my address. Please write me. I've been hoping you would. We are cousins, you know, and close ones at one time. This is from 1975, this letter. Bill of sale for a mobile home. This is from 1982. All right, we're not going to read that. <laughs> That's not appropriate. Constitution of International Union, United Steel Workers of America. We have a map. Detroit. Oh gosh. Uh, so I'm not going to show... It looks like this person had been writing um, someone that was uh, incarcerated. That's all I'm going to say. And they did some writing. It says, ride hard, die fast. So... Oh, goodness. These are <laughs> gift certificates to a body shop and a ta well, a tattoo studio. <laughs> 10, 20, 30, $40. I, I don't know if there's an expiration date on there. More paper work, more letters. Action Bail Bonds, Leroy Hardman from Florida. What if that was from Dog the Bounty Hunter? You know how funny that would be? Do people still give, do bail bonds still give out cards like this? So this little bag kind of gives us somewhat of an idea of perhaps what went on. But again, these papers are so old. You know, these are from the 80s that... 80s and 70s, you know. I don't really know if they have any weight or bearing on the unit now. 1980 photo thing. So that is it for this box, it seems. Um, some more sellable items. That neat Harley hat. There were a few Harley items in there, in the unit. And then again, well, the tea bag holders are mine. <laughs> I'm not selling them. But um, yeah, so those boxes down. I'll make another video about the comic books that I found uh, going through them, researching them. 
and seeing if, you know, we found any great ones or if they're just your average comics. Still fun to find vintage comics in a locker. That's one of the things that people do look for when they buy storage units. They look for the comic boxes, which are the long boxes, because I don't want to say, you know, nine times out of ten they have comics in them. They could or they couldn't, but that's a telltale sign that there might be comics in those boxes. So a lot of people will bid on a unit just because of the style and shape of a box. Uh, this unit, lots of boxes, lots of interesting things. Unsure of the whole story behind the unit, uh, what happened, but at least uh, we could save these items from being thrown out because at storage facilities, they hold these auctions. And uh, if they didn't, then what they would do is they would pretty much just get a dumpster and throw everything out. They need to rent the unit. They need to make money. They need to make their money back from the unit not being uh, paid on. So that's why they hold these auctions. And without these auctions, the items would end up in the trash. Similar to garbage picking, we never know the circumstances behind why someone hasn't paid on a unit. Um, sometimes it is sad. Sometimes it's just they don't want the things anymore. They inherited the unit. They have no uh, reason or want or need to keep anything. So they just let the unit ride and then it goes up to auction. But a lot of these things are still usable, uh, still sellable, or they could be recycled, such as scrap metal and even wood from furniture. So, interesting. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next video as we go through the comics. Uh, I'm sure that you'll be able to teach me a lot about comics. I know nothing. And we'll see if there are any uh, good comics in the unit. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, Click on that thumbs up button button and stay tuned for the next adventure here at Paper and Moose.